Hi everyone! In this video I'm going to show you two ways of exporting your animations from Krita. So if one way doesn't work for you, there's another option. Now if you want to export directly from Krita as a GIF or MP4, you'll want to go to File, Render Animation, select Video, check your first and last frame, and your width and height of your canvas is correct, along with your frames per second. You wanna make sure all of these match the canvas that you've been working in. You'll then need something called FFmpeg, and I have the Windows and Mac versions that I use on my Gumroad, which you can download through the link in the description. They still work with the newer version too, so once you have the file, move it to your desktop or somewhere safe where it won't be deleted. To link FFmpeg to Critter, click this folder, select the file and press open. Now in the drop down menu beside render as, there are a few options you can choose from. I've only ever used MP4 or GIF, so once you've chosen what one you want, you can select it. And then you wanna to go to these three little dots beside the render as and make sure that baseline is selected. Even if it's already there, click that menu and select it again, just in case. I've had a few errors exporting in the past, but this fixed them. Once you've done that, click OK, and you wanna choose your file location, so where you want to save it, and then just click Save. Press OK, and your animation will render. And that's the first way of exporting your animation from Critter. The second way to export your animation is to export it as an image sequence. You can then bring it into an editing program to layer it up with a background, sound effects, music and camera moves. To do this, go to File, Render Animation and select Image Sequence from the top. You'll want to check that your first frame and last frame are correct. After that, you can select the File Format window and as you can see there are a lot of options. I would recommend selecting PNG Image as it offers transparency. You'll then want to go to this folder here and choose where you want to save it. As this will export every frame as an individual image, I'd suggest making a new folder to put them in. You can then rename your test and I tend to leave this option alone. If you were working on a storyboard, you could select only unique frames, so you won't get any duplicates. But I tend to leave this unticked when exporting a finished animation. After that, simply press OK and your animation will export. Once your animation has finished rendering, you should have something like this within the folder that you made. Now to turn this PNG sequence into a moving animation with music and sound effects, I'll want to use an editing program. For me personally, I use the free version of DaVinci Resolve, which you can get by going to their website. So to start, I'll open up DaVinci Resolve and make a new project. Once that's open, I'll go to the top just over here and press File and go down to Project Settings. Here I can check whether my frame rate matches my animation and change it if it doesn't. Now if I go to the Media Panel, which is the first button at the bottom of the page, I can then go up to the top and select these three little dots and make sure Show Individual Frames is unticked. I can then go to my animation and select my first image and use Control A on my keyboard to select the entire loop. After that, I'll click and drag them into the media panel. As you can see, my PNG sequence has appeared as a single image in the media panel. I'll then want to click and drag it into the media pool and then do the same thing to any music, sound effects or backgrounds I wanted to bring into the animation. Now once I have all my files in this window, I can then go to the timeline panel just along the bottom and they'll appear in the media pool up here. From this point, I can drag them into my timeline and arrange them how I like. When I'm happy with how my animation looks and sounds, I'll go down here to the deliver icon. Most of the time, if it's a YouTube video, I'll select YouTube from the preferences, but if you have a custom animation, you'll want to select this and choose your own settings from this window. Now for this animation, because it isn't a regular 1920 by 1080 canvas, I've selected custom and down here I've chose custom again and I've used my export settings that are the same size as my canvas in Krita. 
If there are still black edges around your preview image, you'll want to go to File, Project Settings, and change them here to match your Critter canvas size. Once you've chosen your file name and your location, and all your options down here are correct, you can add to Render Queue. Once it's appeared in the Render Queue, you can select Render All. As always, I hope this tutorial was helpful. Leave a comment if you've got any questions. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want to see more animations and tutorials from me. And I'll be back with another video real soon. Bye.